what prompted you to find every butterfly in Britain in, in, in a year, no less as well? Yeah, it was a uncompleted boyhood mission of mine. So I'd, I'd got really into butterflies as a kid, aged about eight. And at that age, my dad to me seemed to have wildlife superpowers and he seemed to be able to name every <laughs> bird in the sky and every flower and blade of grass under his feet. But um, yeah, his superpowers deserted him when it came to butterflies. And so this was something that we explored together and we were on holiday at Holm Dunes Nature Reserve on the north north coast. And dad had discovered that the brown argus used to be found here and no longer was. And so we set out to find it one sunny lunchtime together. And uh, there was just something about that first day going off in pursuit of this butterfly there was an exciting mission you know trying to find something that we didn't know if it was there or not and that dad had said was you know a little bit rare as it, as it indeed was in those days in the 1980s and uh but some spark just lit that day looking at these butterflies it was a beautiful sunny day in the June smelt of time and it was a lovely experience and I think also the fact that my dad wasn't this big expert in butterflies handing handing it on to me it was something that we discovered together and we began going off looking for butterflies together and we did kind of more conventional father-son things like going and watching Norwich City play football in the winter but in, in, in the summer we'd go off on these missions and I went to uh, look for the dingy skipper at Narborough Common in Norfolk and we went to Foxley Wood in Norfolk to look for particular butterflies like the White Admiral and, and the Purple Emperor which was extinct then um, from Norfolk and then we gradually travelled further afield but we never we never got and we continued to do this all through my teens really you know I still enjoyed it you know once or twice a summer me and dad would go on a trip together and try and see some new species but we ran out of summers or we ran out of steam and never got to see all 58 as it then was species of British butterfly and then I was in my 30s in working and living in London and feeling con uh, increasingly sort of alienated uh, with city life and um, and a, a sort of not estranged but not connected in the way I wanted to be with the countryside where I'd grown up and uh, loved and wanted to live and going and completing that unfulfilled boyhood mission seemed to me to be a good way to reconnect with the countryside and, and so it proved and I did also I was a journalist and I was in search of a topic for a book and um, I'd actually had some discussions with uh, an, a, then uh, a young sort of literary agent called Carolina Sutton who became my literary agent and um, we actually had discussions and she was like well what were you passionate about as a boy you know because I said I really want to I'd love to write a book and I said well butterflies and, and so you know she said that sounds like an interesting subject so I, I went away and had a thought and so it was the two things kind of coming together in a in a very organic way that um, that desire to, um, you know, kind of return to nature, but also it tied in with writing. So, so it, it was from the start, my mission was tied up with writing the book that became The Butterfly Isles. So was there a species that stood out for you? I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I've, I have read the book, but they're, they're all interesting species in their own right. But is there a species that you were like, oh, that's my favourite or that's the one I really want to find? Well, the, I, I suppose there were about five that I'd never seen as a, as a boy. I say about because I'd actually slightly lost track of what I had seen and what I hadn't. But um, <laughs> um, but but uh, the one for me that I really wanted to see was the checkered skipper, which uh, became extinct in England in 1977, but lingered on on in the highlands of Scotland. There was this relic population up there that had had moved north in warmer times and then become cut off and stranded and I love the story of how that butterfly was rediscovered in Scotland as late as 1941 you know during the second world war it was only then that that people realized that there was a this extraordinary sort of outpost of checkered skippers way to the north of what was considered their natural range and then the irony of them being wiped out in what was considered their natural range in England in Rutland in um, the lovely old forest of Rockingham and, and and enduring up in Scotland so that was the one I really wanted to see and 
in terms of highlights on the way there were there were so many it was um lovely the only thing is is that sometimes people say oh wow that's so impressive to do it in a year it, it's actually i always say to people don't do it in a year whatever you do you know <laughs> and, uh, i was combining it with a full-time job and it was just a ridiculous amount of uh, you know burning carbon by driving all kinds of places you know do it do it over five years enjoy it you know have a holiday well, once a year to a lovely butterfly location like you know go to the isle of Wight and then see the glanville fertility or have a holiday in the highlands and see the checkered skipper you know that's the quality way to do it 